Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Muriel and Jim. Hope you're well. Richard McNeekins. Hello, Richard, Barb, and Justin. Ah, the, oh, the doers, welcome. Rajiv says good morning. Good morning, morning. Rajiv. Janet Ferguson is watching. Mary M. Harvey is also watching. Oh, good. Bill, I was going to send you words last night. Text me if you want me to do it for next uh, next week, all right? Rosalind McIntyre says good morning. Good morning, Rosalind. Oh, they got Molly, Mike. Pieter Baccarin is here. Ah, hello. Catherine Cassagani. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning. Peter. Camilla Kamal and Colin Young are watching. Colin says good morning from the Youngs. Good morning, Colin and Jude. And, and Sorry? I can't see the rest because of the thing. The thing. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. So Technical Mary difficulties. Mary Harvey. Janet Ferguson says good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Grace Brewster Yates says good morning, everyone. Good morning, Grace. And something else, but I can't see it. <laughs> is there any way you can watch Any way you can shoot yep. that over? Or? Well, we're adjusting the camera here, folks. We're adjusting. Sorry, guys. I want to see. It's all not an earthquake. This is the joy of being live. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, live. This is good. Live and imperfect. The spirit of gentleness is, uh, is shaking the house. We have, we have no candle. Um, the candle's there. The matches. Oh. The matches would be there. We have no matches. Oh. Okay, well, why don't you go find matches? Sure. There's always a Excuse lighter me. somewhere in our house for some reason. For some reason. Grace says, morning everyone, Ken and Grace are watching. Good morning. Susan Jess and Umadai Suklai. Yeah. Suklal. Suklal, yes. Uh, it says, good morning and happy Victoria Day. Oh, right, yes. Well, yes. Yes, happy Victoria. What are you doing on the long weekend? Sandra Jackson is watching. John Boyd is watching. They say, Eunice and John say good morning. Good morning, Eunice. Good morning. John. James Stratton and, well, is watching. And Sorry we missed you, James. But it was, I don't blame you for running. It was a beautiful afternoon for a run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> says, good morning. Margaret Baccarin Wendell says, is watching. And Pramila Kamal says, good morning. Anwar and Pramila are watching. Lovely. Good morning, welcome. Good morning, everyone. John Collins says, hello, everyone. John and Helen. Hi, John and Helen. Doreen Barrington is watching. And Colin Young says, Betty Moore says, good morning. Hi, Doreen. Hi, Betty. Ann Campbell and John <coughs> Collins are watching. Morning, Ann. Ann says good morning. Good. Grandma Marcy from Marguerite Frost is watching. Oh, how's the... Grandma Marcy's watching from the cottage. Oh. <laughs> Herbert Eitner says good morning. Hi, Herb and Anna. Hope you're well. Kim Shepard is here. Yes, you want to click on Kim? Hello, Kim? Oh, not, not, not yet. Not yet. Just Paul don't lose Willoughby her. says, hello, everyone. Hi, Paul. Good to have you on board. Anne Marie Dewar says, good morning. Happy Victoria Day. God save the Queen. God. Huzzah! Huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> yes. Huzzah. Indeed. Kim says, good morning. Good morning again. Yes. She also says, it is a beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let us bring joy. Rejoice. Rejoice and, and be glad. Be glad in there we go. Aha. Aha. I truly am. Huzzah. Child. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think the best part was when, it, at high school, you. I could bring you in. For you had to bring baptisms. me in for for uh, for religion show class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right, show and tell. Grace this is my father, says, the father. Good morning, Grace. Good morning from Ray and Doreen. Good morning, Ray and Doreen. I'm glad you're all Scott here. Scott Dune is watching. Hi, good morning, Scott. Good morning, Scott. Welcome. Uh, Jean Bradshaw is watching. Hello, Jean. Welcome. Welcome aboard, Scott. It's good to have you. Oh, I'm fairly certain it's 
Doreen Scott dude is what I said. Oh, uh, Doreen? I see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> Welcome aboard Doreen. <laughs> and it's <laughs> done. Go. Not dude. Done? Yes, oh. done. Oh. Oopsie. Yes. Um, did I say Jean Bradshaw already? Yes, yes you did. did. Hi, Jean. Well, then Felicity Alexander is watching. Morning, Felicity. And Jean McCreet. Hi, Jean McCreet. Welcome. It's good to have you. <laughs> hope, you, hope everyone has their coffee. What impresses me about the choir or the band video is, is that several people are playing two different things at the same time. That's exciting. That is exciting. Like Thomas was doing a trombone solo and playing the guitar. Or is that the bass? It's hard to tell. Looks like a bass. But uh, check that out. very, very impressive. He is multi-talented. Yes, he is. Gord Warren says good morning. The whole crew is here. Valerie and Ikone. Ikone? It's E-K-E-N-E. And -E -E. oh, e -E. Ikone. There, yes. Nice. Ijoma, and welcome. It's good to have you with us. Anne-Marie Dewar says bass. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Henry. <laughs> I, I sit corrected, but it does look like a bass. It's just, I'm squinting at it from across the... Uh, it's hard to see it from over here. Yes, it I is. I can't see it. Is watching. Rob Ryan says, yes, happy Sunday. Yes, that's what we like to hear. Yes. Pam Morris says, morning all. Good morning, Pam. Felicity Alexander says, good morning. Good morning. So we are uh, just going to have a few, a couple of announcements, and then I want to invite, uh, we're going to do something a little different uh, today. Uh, we're going to invite uh, Kim Shepard, who is the clerk of session, to join us. So uh, Simpson is busy doing the tech stuff while I'm talking. But I just wanted to, uh, first off, welcome everyone to... Uh, to our worship service this morning. It is good that you are with us and it is good that we are able to gather together so that we might know God together. And uh, by way of announcements, I just want to uh, say that the Faith in Action campaign for our annual Faith in Action campaign is starting uh, this Sunday, uh, today. And uh, while you might sit there and say, how are we gonna do Faith in Action while we're uh, all in isolation? Well. Uh, Robin Kirkpatrick and myself and the Missions Committee have been working on that and much more information will be coming to you uh, shortly. Uh, so look for an e-blast uh, that will be coming and if you're not on the e-blast system we invite you to uh, connect with either Kim or uh, Shepard or Pam Laurie uh, to get your email on there so that we can communicate with you and then we uh, Sorry, why don't you bring Kim in while we're talking, and then and then sorry, did you? It says that yes. friends won't be your friends won't be able to watch this live video unless they're in your selected audience when someone else is on the camera. So I don't really worry. <laughs> okay, uh, we're trying something new, and if we lose you, we hope that once Kim finishes, you will be able to resume the video. Our apologies, we're. If, if the tech doesn't work, let us know. Uh, we're going to bring... How will they let us know? I'm sure they'll let us know. Uh, we'll, we'll okay. cut, we, we, will, we will continue with the service. But uh, anyway, the point is, is if you don't have the... Uh, uh, on the e-blast, look for the PDF and the uh, Faith in Action. The title is called Mission Possible. There will be a link, a, a page uh, on the website, and we'll be putting things on Facebook. So, uh, without much further ado, let's bring in Kim and... Okay, Kim is adding. Uh, and uh, the purpose for bringing Kim in is to uh, help her as a clerk of session just speak to uh, the congregation. Are you there? Oh, we won't Hello? Okay. All right, try again. Hello? There she is. Okay. I can't. Can you hear me? Okay. Well, you're not live. <laughs> I can kind of hear you, Kim.
as building. And is Kim still there? Kim is still here. Okay, well, Kim, if you could yep. start, please, that would be good. <laughs> good morning, everybody. For those of you that don't know me, and Jeff has already announced who I am, I'm Kim Shepherd, and I am the clerk worshiping these last few Sunday mornings. Please know that our leadership of the church is actively praying for you and your families that you may stay safe and well. Session continues to meet, and the session summary for May is Brampton.ca. We want to keep you up to date as quick as possible. E email blasts are being sent weekly. And if you have an email and would like to receive these updates, please send an email to socialmedia at standrewsbrampton.ca. We have also started a Facebook page uh, for Sunday School. It's St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church hyphen Brampton Sunday School. Please join us on this page for ideas for families and also for youth of the church. The Facebook page you can connect under the announcements. We need your help and support today. We normally do not receive enough contributions to meet the expenses of the operations of the church. And right now things are even worse. There are several expenses that have continued through the closure of the building during this pandemic. This, is include, this includes the stipends, salaries, and utilities, which are our main expenses. This has left our general operations fund dangerously low. Please consider how you can help us uh, from the following. You can make a secure online donation by using the donate button on our webpage. You can also sign up for PAR. The PAR registration can also be located on our webpage. And lastly, you can, you can mail your offering to the church checks only, please. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me at clerk at standrewsbrampton.ca. Please continue to pray, contact friends and family, and contribute to the ongoing life and ministry of St. Andrews. Be well and enjoy the rest of your day and right. long weekend. Blessings to you all. Thank you. All right, thank you. I just want to uh, add one other thing that uh, um, on the announcements before we begin is that for those of you who are asking about Bible study, uh, the uh, Tuesday morning Bible study, the good news is one will come, uh, we will be holding one. Uh, Rosemary and I have uh, had several uh, high level conversations and uh, we have uh, a look, uh, come up with a topic, and I think everyone will be very interested in it. We will send that information to Jean, and Jean will send that information out to you. So uh, if you are part of the Tuesday morning Bible study, uh, look for that in your email box. And if you're interested in it, you can reach out to Jean uh, Bradshaw, who is uh, deputy clerk of session, and she'll be happy to add you to that mailing. So uh it's been a lot of announcements and we that's uh just sort of the nature of the beast right now but we are uh let's take a moment in silent prayer as we prepare for worship amen We like the Christ candle to remind us that Jesus Christ is with us as we listen for the word of the Lord. Let us hear the call to worship. As a community committed to loving God by loving our neighbors, learning together to know God's love through worship and study, let us put our faith into action by loving and caring for each other, using God's gifts to go forth to bring others to Christ. As sisters and brothers bound by love that comes from God, let us give of ourselves in the worship of God by joining together in prayer. Let us pray. We'll be using a paraphrase of the hymn, Who is Going to Tell the Story? Jesus, the great commissioner, you call us to serve. Who is going to tell the story? Tell of the Lord's great glory. Who is going to let the whole world know? and help his disciples to grow and multiply. We thank you for your trust and your faith in us. 
Jesus, the one who came to proclaim God's good news, who's going to bring your kingdom? Who's going to spread your gospel? Who's going to do the kindly deed, comfort the one in need, and help supply? We praise you for your encouraging challenge and challenging call to us. Jesus, who showed us how to serve and compels us to act, who's going to feed the hungry, care for the sick and lonely? Who's going to let the whole world see? People can live in harmony. We are. And we thank you that with the Spirit's help, we can be your kingdom bringers. Amen. And now for the uh, see and hear. Hi, everyone. Um, so for the children out there uh, and those of young at heart, um, there's always something that you have to do at home, like things that we know that we should do. Perhaps your mom tells you to do that or your dad. Like um, maybe you have a dirty cup. You don't just leave it for someone else to pick up. If your mom says, um, could you please take that to the kitchen? Then you take it to the kitchen. And if you need to clean your room, you clean your room. Or if you have to do homework, you do your homework. But there's one thing that's the same in every single one of those things. All, every single one of the things that you have to do, you have to start by getting up and then doing it. If you just sit there, it's not gonna get done. And that's, that's kind of uh, silly, isn't it? You're not, not getting <laughs> anything done. Um, if you have to do these things, you actually have to get up and go and do these things. Well, did you know that in the Bible, God and Jesus ask us to do things? They ask us to get up and talk about God, but get up and be kind and gentle to others, to do good things. And the only way to start doing that is to get up and go and do it. So remember, it doesn't matter what you have to do, and whether it's hard or whether it's easy, the first thing to start is to get up and go and do it. Thank you. The invitation for confession is an opportunity for us to write our relationship with God and to recognize that sin has indeed stained our lives. Because friends, if we think we have no sin in us, we deceive ourselves. The Apostle James wrote, if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who being not hearers, who forget but are doers who act, will be blessed in their doing. Do these, <clears throat> do these words convict us? Do they reflect your faith? Do they reveal our true nature? We have each been called by Christ to service, to seek to be servants rather than to be served. Yet do our actions reflect the health of our faith? Let us therefore seek God's forgiveness by confessing our sins, first in the unison prayer of confession that is found printed on the PDF of the uh, worship service, and then by offering to God uh, a prayer of silent confession in the language of our hearts. Let us pray together. <clears throat> God of grace, love, and compassion, through your Son you call us to put our faith into action, to go out into the world to proclaim your gospel, and to do what you have commanded us to do by living grace-filled lives of faith and service, by loving you and our neighbors as one. Yet we often fail those who call us to serve and neglect the world's needs, leaving them to others. God of the Great Commission, forgive us. Challenge us to go and do what you long for us to do as we seek to respond to your call to service and faith. Oh, 
Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, hear and believe the good news. The scripture says this, Brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Through the gift of grace, we have been saved, and it is through this gift that we are called to offer ourselves back to God. May God grant us the ability to live up to this calling. Thanks be to God for the gift of our salvation. For in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins have been forgiven. Amen. Now on the PDF uh, of the liturgy, you will find the link there to the readings and the prayer. If you haven't already had a chance to review it, uh, you can review it uh, after the service. But I want to uh, thank Ian Jess for doing the readings this morning and the introduction. And uh, there is a second reading which Regan will offer to us. But before we do that, let us join together with the uh, unison prayer for illumination that is found on the PDF. Let us pray. Calling God by your word, open our hearts and challenge us to go and do what you have taught us to do. Live lives of active faith through service and love. Amen. The second reading today is, excuse me, is James chapter 2, verses 14 to 26. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith apart from works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, that faith was active along with his works, and faith was brought to completion by the works. Thus, the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see, that a person is justified by works, and not by faith alone. Otherwise, or likewise, was not Rahab the prostitute as also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another road? Just, for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I often, just so you know, just to uh, give you a little glimpse as to how some of these things work, when I start working on a uh, preaching series, it is often, uh, while I look at the calendar, I, I look at it largely six months ahead of time. And I have to do that because, well, things come up. Well, uh, as we all know, something came up. And... What was interesting is I was able to, uh, I was thinking about what we could do for faith in action because faith in action usually happens around this time of year. And as I was uh, casting about for something, I came across uh, a book uh, which was about how to be or what it means to be a missional Christian. And uh, I was looking at it and thinking about it and Really, nothing kind of clicked, but I eventually I got the book and was reading through it. And again, this was, well, just after Christmas. And when I uh, started to put things down on paper, and yes, I still use paper, uh, we were, uh, I was starting, to, things started to come together. And I truly believe that in this process of discernment, the Spirit is sort of saying to me, okay, this is what we need to hear, and this is how uh, you can apply it. And, well, 
the uh, Faith in Action series, which I, uh, after changing the title several times, we came up with the title Mission Possible, as in it is something that is possible. It is the mission that we are called to do, and God helps make it possible. And uh, I know right now images of Tom Cruise and a fuse going with a time clock is going to your head, but the point, even in those movies, while it might have been a mission impossible, do you always see how they managed to make it work? And given the fact that right now we're all separated and shut in, uh, as we were talking about, uh, Robin and uh, the mission committee and I were talking about this, we actually were able to quickly uh, change a few of our projects and we will be uh, introducing those to you so that you can do them where you are, so that together we can indeed be the church. Now, as Ian said in the uh, introduction, we are shifting uh, from our, uh, the last couple of weeks where we were looking at how the first church dealt with the hardships and the suffering and uh, the difficulties of not having a building and, or being able to gather in large numbers. And we heard how that church was fully devoted to God, to each other, and to the world. And now we are shifting to look at how the commission or the mission that Jesus gave to those disciples is the same commission that Jesus has been giving to Christians since. And that is to respond faithfully and fully to God's grace by putting their faith into action and our faith into action by carrying out Christ's mission to the world. So, as we begin, can I ask you a question? How many questions do you think there are in the gospel? Now, while you're thinking about that, and how many questions do you think Jesus asked? While you're thinking about that, I just want to sort of clarify something, because contrary to what you might assume, Jesus wasn't the person who you would want to go to for answers. I know we say Jesus is the answer to everything, but if you read the Gospels closely, you'll figure out or find out that Jesus was more of a questioner. He was the one who asked more questions than he answered. So those of you who might have already Googled the answer, and shame on you, but that's okay. I had to too because I lost count. The point is, how many questions did Jesus ask? 307. 307. He asked that many questions, but how many questions were asked of him? Do you think you know? 183. Now, how many answer questions did Jesus answer? Three. Now, I ask you this because Jesus' questions, often in response to a question, reveal what Jesus wants us to know and wants us to struggle and wonder and wrestle and to think about so that we can think through the stuff of life, so that we can better understand not just ourselves, not just the answer, but how we can indeed draw closer to God. Asking questions was central to Jesus' teaching, and as people of faith, asking questions should be central to our putting our faith into action. Now, anyone uh, who has gone to university or uh, high school knows that teachers like to ask a lot of questions, and Jesus was a teacher. But often, uh, they're using a model which goes back to about the 5th century BC with a uh, um, Socrates with something called the Socratic method, a process of questions and questioning. And that in asking questions, this uh, exchange, when you ask a question, someone answers and you then ask a question of the answer and then they respond, is designed uh, by the teacher to draw out the ideas, to draw out the underlying assumptions that the person who is uh, being asked the questions of, or the presuppositions that they might have in order to help that person 
scrutinize and evaluate and redefine their beliefs and their practice in order to, that they might, in the hopes, come to uh, understand the general or universal moral truths. All of that is to say the Socratic method was to answer a question with a question. And, well, there's something incessantly and slightly bothersome and challenging about that. And I wouldn't want to have been a person who had gone to Jesus to ask questions, although I would have loved to have done that, because Jesus often and almost always, as we saw by those numbers, uh, instead of answering and saying, this is it, he would ask a question. But he would ask specific questions that were meant to reveal what you were hiding. Because when someone starts challenging you with these questions, it's bothersome because, well, we all spend a lot of time hiding. Hiding from, we're either hiding something or we're hiding, well, from someone or God. Remember God's first question in the Garden of Eden of Adam and Eve? Where are you? You see, God and Jesus' questions are meant to reveal, not conceal. They are meant to illuminate hidden truth or a forgotten reality or some lost sense of what should be. And seen this way, rather than being bothersome, we are to see Jesus' questions as, as uh, also being comforting. His questions tell us that he's not content with simply being our or my or your savior. He is insisting on being uh, our or my or your Lord. He doesn't just want followers. He desires us to actually and literally live out and by our faith. What this means for us is that um, along with being forgiven, healed, saved, and restored, we are also to be actively and uh, be engaged in being God and Jesus' witnesses and agents in and to the world. This is what the, commi the commission that Jesus gave to his disciples before his ascension. It is our mission, should we choose, to accept it. Now, what's interesting about this commission is Jesus starts his ministry with the disciples by inviting them to come and see. He invites us also to be with him, to learn and to follow. But this is and was only half of what uh, our life in, of and in faith is meant to be. Because Jesus' life and ministry and mission taught us another truth, another way to live and to be faithful. Halfway through the Gospel of Luke, uh, in chapter 10, basically the entire chapter uh, Jesus's ministry shifts with his uh, sending out of the disciples, uh, or what is the title there, the 70 followers. And he sends them out into the countryside to the towns and the villages two by two. And this exercise of being sent out happens just before our reading, where we hear in Luke the test from the lawyer, the questions and the answers which ultimately bring to us the Christ commandment and the debate between Jesus and the, the, the lawyer about who is our neighbor that provides Jesus the opportunity to offer a parable, the parable of the Good Samaritan, which then leads to more questions. And then Jesus' challenging command and commission to go and do likewise. The first thing we need to know is that when Jesus says go, here in this text and elsewhere in the Bible, what he is doing is he's, he is saying, it's good that you are here and that you are listening and that you are learning, but your faith must be active, an active faith. So get up, go. The second thing that we must know is that going and doing isn't an option. But this is where most people, most Christians, uh, well, check out. Think of the rich young man uh, who turns away from Jesus in a similar exchange. 
putting our faith into action comes at a cost. And this leads us to the hardest thing about living out the mission or of being a missional follower of a missional Lord. Now, let's unpack that word before we go any further. Because missional, uh, as an adjective, comes from mission or missionary or missiology, um, in all, which comes from uh, the Latin uh, 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 missio dei. Uh, and what this directly is translated as is mission of God or the sending of God. Because when you think about what happened with Jesus, we realize that God was a missionary God. And as people of God and Christ followers, as Christians, go and do is in our DNA. It is in the DNA of our faith. It is a statement of both direction and purpose. Go, take, going takes faith. Doing takes commitment. Missional is faith in action. And Jesus commissioned each of us to share what he came to give, the grace of God's love and the gift, uh, the grace of God's love. And the gift is that, uh, the gift of our salvation, but he also came to give to us himself. Jesus knew what going meant because he left his place in heaven and crossed the universe and gave up immortality all to die for us on a cross. He knew what doing cost as well. He didn't give when he had the time. He didn't give when he felt like it. He did by committing himself wholly and fully, giving his life for hours to reveal the love, mercy, and power of God. And that's what he's asking us to do in this commission. And his commission has no boundaries or borders, and neither should our missional faith. So, go and do. When he heard that, that took the lawyer out of his safety uh, zone, out of his comfort, out of his hypothetical and theoretical uh, mindsets and constructs of what his faith was, and took him into and placed him in the practical and real commitment aspect of what it means to be a follower. And yes, it's bothersome, it's frightening, but it's also refreshing and very real. This go and do commission should be a wake up call, but it should also remind us that Jesus calls us and saves us for more. And he insists that we put our faith into action. As Ian mentioned in the introduction, the inconvenient truth about Christianity isn't that Jesus died. It's that we are to live out our lives in faithful response to his death. And Jesus made it clear that this faith is to be, and this response is to be, a go and do faith. James, in the reading that Regan read, encourages the early Christians in the church of Jerusalem, which he was the leader of, repeating the lessons that he learned from Jesus himself and having heard through the commission, <clears throat> tells them and us that faith without works is dead. And this is what the Acts 2 church did and that's what they had. Despite their fear, they went out and they served. They sought to live up to their and our commission by going and doing to build up the kingdom by loving their neighbor through one faithful act at a time. Friends, as we begin this Faith in Action series, as we look forward to finding new ways to reach out and be faithful, to show God's grace and mercy and love, you, me, all of us together were made and saved for a reason to live out our divine nature and to take up our commission and to accept our mission, to put our faith into action. Amen. As uh, we heard or we hear in the scripture, 
Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress. To whom much has been given, much is expected. How do we put our faith into action? How do we live out our response? Week after week, we are offered a choice to declare ourselves before God as to whom we belong. We are given a chance to make a difference in the lives of others and of the world, and our offering gives us an opportunity to be the church. So freely we have received gifts from self of salvation and grace. Freely we shall return to God what is God's in the form of our weekly offering. And as you heard from Kim earlier, well, I hope you did, we thank you for your support for the ministries of St. Andrew. We thank you for those who have, uh, to those who have mailed in their donations, uh, those who have applied for PAR, which we are grateful for. Uh, and we are, would like you to know, uh, if you want to know more about what is happening, please, there is the link that is there. But in thanks uh, of, uh, for the gifts that have been given, let us join together in the unison prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we respond to your call and claim on our lives, accept these gifts given freely, offered joyfully, may they be of use. And may our faith and actions be expressions of our love for you, in and through our love for our neighbors and your church. Amen. At this point, I want to uh, say thank you to, uh, to Sheila, to Rob, to the uh, Leap of Faith Band and to St. Andrew's Senior Choir for the beautiful and wonderful uh, music. Thank you to Thomas for uh, helping uh, with the tech side of things. Uh, the music has been uh, wonderful and it was uh, very beautiful. I had it playing at the beginning of the service. We'll play some at the end. Uh, but uh, if you haven't already, uh, take some time today to listen to that music. Let us go to... Uh, but also, before we join together in prayer, our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession, I just want to uh, remind you, if there are any pastoral needs or concerns, uh, please reach out to myself, uh, to Kim Shepherd, to Jean Bradshaw, to Pam Laurie, or Felicity Alexander. We would, be, uh, we would rather hear three times than not at all. And uh, at, at the very least, we would want to be able to uh, know so that we can offer you prayer and support. Uh, and in that spirit, I just wanted to uh, uh, mention that in, in uh, the silent language of our hearts, we will indeed be praying for members uh, of St. Andrews who are in uh, need of prayer. So let us pray. Loving God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and to present our prayers to you in his name. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that our prayers may reflect your will and your steadfast love for all. Hear, O God, our prayers as we bring before you the troubles and perils of peoples and nations. Direct us to respond to those most in need of your living hope. Allow us all in this time of uh, this COVID pandemic to share our resources so that we might bring about healing and restoration, that we might bring about peace and harmony as we seek to be your hands, your feet, your hearts, your arms, your face and voice, in a world where your body is most required. Hear, O Lord, our prayers as we bring before you the plans and programs of this community, the hopes of St. Andrews, and of those who attend it, are part of it. Enable us to become the community you desire us to be. In this time of uncertainty, fill us with confidence that your purpose for us is good. In this time of isolation, be with us in all that we say and do as we seek to return your grace, love, and hope to those we meet and speak to in your name. May we, as individuals, form a community of faith that reflects your glory in all that we say and do. Hear, O oh Lord, our prayers as we bring before you the needs of those known and unknown to us. We pray for those who are experiencing the frustration of being out of work, and the anxiety and desperation that comes with it. We pray for those who are even more lonely now that they are not able to receive those occasional visitors or even to go out. We pray for those who must make do with less. We pray also that you would relieve the anguish of the bereaved 
that you would offer comfort to those who are ill, those having gone through surgery, those in recovery, those who are facing the decline of abilities, or those who are in treatment or are missing their treatments. And we pray especially, God of compassion, that you give hope to those who feel that they can no longer cope or live in fear because of what's going on. Hear our Lord, hear, O Lord, our prayers as we pray for them and ourselves in the silent language of our hearts. Be gracious and answer these and all our prayers prayed in and through our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we gather to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The life that was in one place at one time was changed. So it could be in all places, at all times, in this room and in yours. For instance, you go out into the rest of this day, into the rest of this uh, uh, long weekend, uh, as you go maybe back to work, as you go out, uh, as you are now uh, able to, as you go out into the week to come, and into the places as you, uh, where you live, where you might work, and where you indeed might uh, gather, may all that you say and do reflect a life in, lived out in response to the mission that God and God's Spirit makes possible in and through you. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you today, now, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Gord Warren is asking how Colleen is. Colleen is doing well. Uh, and uh, apparently she was texting out and there's hope that she might be, uh, if recovery goes quickly, she might be home in a couple of days. So continue your prayers for her. Thank you for asking us. 